It's Jesse. Today I am drinking some Moroccan mint tea from OT's. It's like half empty because I had to wait for my camera to charge. Today I'm here to review the Tensorit series by J.Y. Yang. There are four books currently published. I own three of them because the first I got for free is an ebook. And I don't actually know if the series is finished or if there's plans to continue it, but we'll review what is published right now. The Tensorit series is a series of novellas written by non-binary Singaporean author J.Y. Yang. It follows, geez, I don't even know really how to explain this story. Um, let me just check what the publisher description is. So according to Macmillan, J.Y. Yang's Tensorit series is a lush, vivid, silk punk fantasy series in a world where elementalist mages contend with revolutionary mechanists while dinosaur sky battles Battle Sky Spanning Naga. The first two novellas, The Red Threads of Fortune and The Black Tides of Heaven, can be read in any order. Okay, well, that last sentence isn't true. Um, the Red Threads of Fortune takes place, like, five years after The Black Tides of Heaven, uh, and would really spoil the first book if you didn't read them in order. Um, and that was just a bunch of buzzwords nonsense that doesn't really tell you what it's about. Um, the first two books... Red Threads of Fortune and Black Tides of Heaven, which again I have as ebook, are about these twin siblings, Makoya and Akea, who are kind of torn between their mother, who is the protector, the ruler of the nation, and the monastery, which is where they kind of grew up. And as the series continues past that, it's kind of about the rebellion that's rising up against the protector. Uh, that's the best I can give you because it's just kind of a really interesting, bizarre series, honestly. Along with that, because it's so weirdly structured, I'm not gonna do pros and cons like I've been trying to do for my series reviews, because the series is just so unique. I feel like a lot of things that I say can really just depend on your opinion. I mean, obviously that's always the case. Like, what you think of things is always opinion-based, but I, I feel like it's just going to polarize people. So what I love, you might hate, vice versa. Some people are gonna love these things I talk about. Some people are gonna hate them. So I'm just gonna kind of present them and you can make a decision. For me, I loved this series. So I actually kind of view all of these as positive, but it's up to you. So the first one of these, which despite what I said is definitely a pro, is the queer representation in this book. It's Pride Month, so if you're looking for a good queer fantasy to read, I cannot recommend this enough. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. I'll get into the details of world building later, but one of the aspects of this world is that everybody is not, no one is assigned a gender at birth. And then some time later in their life when they have decided what gender they'd like to take for themselves they go through a ceremony where they are medically transitioned into the body that fits that gender and they get kind of uh, in among the upper classes there's like a party it's called the confirmation it's like a big coming of age thing i have seen in some of the reviews that they kind of criticize this as glorifying the gender binary in a lot of sense because it celebrates when you pick where you fall in this binary. I kind of disagree with that, partially because in the series it explores things outside of that. It also like very deeply explores the decision-making process and how it feels if you're unsure about that. So I think it really explores it really well, um, but maybe just be some something aware of, to be aware of if you're uncertain. Um, and I definitely think read and decide for yourself on that one because honestly this probably came about because I like reading one star reviews. In terms of sexuality, it also covers a wide array. There are same-sex relationships, there's relationships between non-binary people with binary individuals, there's heterosexual relationships, there's even instances of polyamory, although for my personal taste I wish that had been explored a little bit more, but that's personal taste. 
So moving on from diversity, I already talked about the world building some, so let's get a little deeper into that. These books are incredibly short. All four of them together are probably shorter than some of the other fantasy that I have on my shelves. But somehow, despite being so thin, I mean, I think Red Threads of Fortune is the thickest one at, what is this, 213 pages? Despite that, it still really feels like it packs a lot into it in terms of world building. The culture is kind of simple, but it gets really well explained and it feels really immersed. You feel really immersed in it. The magic system gets explored surprisingly deeply, honestly. It's the magic system is something kind of elemental, but it's not elemental in the way I've ever seen it's done before. It's almost closer to like Wheel of Time elemental magic than Avatar The Last Airbender elemental magic, but it's still very, very Eastern inspired, so it kind of pulls from that as well. It's just really interesting, and one of the things I really like is the way they explore the interaction between technology and magic, which I think is just something I really enjoy and I don't see done enough in fantasy books. So next, this is where it really gets hairy in whether it's a pro or a con, depending on who you are. Each of these books is written from a different perspective, and each one is written in a very different style. So the first two, Black Tides of Heaven and Red Threads of Fortune, are the most similar. One of them follows one twin, one of them follows the other twin, and the style is very similar between the two of them. They're more of a traditional feeling fantasy style. But after that, books get much more dramatically different. So book three, The Descent of Monsters, follow the perspective of a character that, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't even met yet before we pick up this book. And it's written as diary entries in this character's journal, as well as like um, official reports and things like that. And then book four, The Ascent to Godhood, is from the perspective of the character we've heard a lot about, we've met once or twice, but it's always kind of been in the background. And it's told as her like drunken ramblings, for lack of a better word. And that sounds really terrible, but in my opinion, it really, really works. And like I said, this is one of those things that's very obviously could be either a pro or a con, depending on your taste. This can really work, or it could be a complete drawback. For me, I really loved it. It did have some things like book three ended up being my least favorite of the series because it was the perspective and the style that I liked the least, but it still was really, really enjoyable. And for me, I liked that. It kept me interested because every book was a little bit different. But somebody else might not like it, especially if you were like me and you were just absolutely totally drawn into this and then a little upset that you didn't get to continue the story in the same way, it can be a little disappointing. Similar to that, these books kind of jump all over this place. This is another criticism I've seen in a lot of the lower rated reviews on Goodreads about this, and I totally get it. The first book covers like 20-30 years. It's like literally from the birth of Makoya and Akea until they're almost, I, won't, I don't want to say middle-aged, but they're adults. And then there's like a several year time gap, and then book two covers like three or four months, if that. And then book three goes on from there, and it kind of picks up shortly after, some indeterminate amount of time after book three ends, and it covers again just a couple months of time, and then it ends on a cliffhanger, and book four barely even addresses what happened in book three. I kind of like it. It really works, and I think this works partially because it works hand in hand with the perspective shifts, so that it feels cohesive even though it's really jumbled. But again, that might not be something you like, but I loved it. I don't have a lot to say. I love this series a lot, and I feel like if I was in person talking to somebody, I could rant about it for hours, but I don't want to do that to you guys, so I'm going to wrap up here. I really recommend this series. It is... I fell in love with it when I read the first book, and every book has just made me love it more. Um, trigger warnings for the series will be in the description. Let me know if you, what you've thought of this series if you've read it. If you haven't read it, 
Does it sound interesting to you now? Do you think you're going to pick it up? If you have any specific questions about the Tense Fruit series, please leave them below. I am really, really hoping we're going to be getting more from it and that the Ascent to Godhood isn't the last we hear of this series, but I foresee myself easily rereading these down the road. Okay, bye. Hey, just popping in here quick. I've been trying to think of something I can do, I can use my platform to do to help with everything happening. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTubers doing things like donating their AdSense money or donating their sponsorship money, things like that, but we don't have any of that. And then I saw EHR is doing, if you send them like a picture that you've donated, they'll send you a sticker, and I figured that's something I can do. I create, I, I'm, I like crafting, I like doing embroidery and things, and so I'll leave a document in the description that you can look and find more information about what I'm doing, but basically if you send us a picture of a receipt on Twitter or Instagram with, um, just to show that you've donated to support, you know, one of the Black Lives Matter movements, one of the insurance companies that are helping out, bail money, whatever you can do to help, I will mail you a little embroidery gift. Um, so just check out that doc. It'll tell you what information I need from you, okay? It's a crazy world, and we all have to support each other right now. Mm -hmm.